Dozens of people with ties to the white nationalist group Patriot Front were arrested in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho on Saturday as they were on their way to disrupt a nearby Pride event. That's according to law enforcement. As you can see here, the suspects were all wearing matching outfits, masks and shields. They were piled inside a U-Haul and reportedly had riot gear and smoke grenades. These high-profile arrests during Pride Month, no less, come as anti-LGBTQ hate speech has been on the rise around our country. In a new report, the AP talks to several experts who warn this increase in hateful rhetoric online and by far-right influencers may be seen as a call to action by extremist groups to mobilize. Joining our conversation, MSNBC national security analyst Frank Figluzzi, former FBI assistant director for counterintelligence. My friend and colleague Jonathan Capehart's here, Washington Post associate editor, host of MSNBC's The Sunday Show. Nick is still with me at the table. Frank, I feel like indirectly and as part of other conversations, you've been pointing us toward this flashing, I don't think it's yellow anymore, flashing red light about domestic violent extremists attaching them to causes and attaching their hate and their threat of violence to causes. Um, this, even though you had issued those warnings, this arrest was so shocking and startling and, and really seems to usher in a very scary public phase. And I know you've also pointed to uh, an imminent decision by the Supreme Court on abortion rights in America. Just talk about the threat of environment in the country right now. Yeah, well, DHS has uh, has told us that we we are in for increased, more dynamic uh, threat environment for the next few months, and they certainly pointed at things like this, like the uh, expected abortion decision. I, I want to say this: it's important to understand that violent extremism doesn't uh, spout out of nowhere. It's not a form of spontaneous combustion. It's not happening in a vacuum. It's cultivated and nurtured. And so if you look at things like the, the Buffalo shooting, for example, um, in fact, look at look at the Walmart uh, El Paso shooting, look at the uh, Charleston, South Carolina church shooting, what do you see cultivating and nurturing those shooters? You see legitimate or quasi-legitimate people, some cable news hosts, even a former president, legitimizing the notion that white replacement theory is happening. It's true. Something needs to be done about it. Similarly, this move, this surge toward anti-trans, um, gender non-conforming uh, violence against those individuals is being cultivated and nurtured by legitimate office holders. Who am I talking about? People like governors in Florida, in Texas, in other states who legitimize intolerance by passing bills um, that say these people are bad, this is wrong, um, don't say this word or don't teach any of this. And so, you know, while they may never expect violence to come from that, that's what happens when you breed intolerance. Intolerance leads to extremism. Extremism can lead to violence. And that's what we saw over the weekend in Coeur d'Alene. And I'm telling you, one of the thoughts that ran through my head watching that news break over the weekend was this. Um, if the police are accurate, saying that this takedown came from a just a concerned citizen, and thank goodness for that concerned citizen, we all better be vigilant the next few months. But if that's what brought down this pullover of the U-Haul, and it wasn't intelligence gathering, security measures, undercover uh, agents or informants, then then that's bad because more of this is coming. And it shows the challenges law enforcement uh, agencies are facing trying to take down these folks that are everywhere and engaged in so-called free speech. We have to rely on a citizen picking up the phone and calling 911. It's such an alarming picture you paint. I, I want to read some more um, from the AP reporting on, on your point, Frank, about cultivation and cultivating hate and the intersection between hate and elected officials. AP writes this, last month, a fundamentalist Idaho pastor told his small Boise congregation that gay, lesbian, and transgender people should be executed by the government. Another fundamentalist pastor in Texas gave similar sermons. Representative Heather Scott, an Idaho Republican lawmaker, recently told an audience that drag queens and other LGBTQ supporters are waging, quote, a war of perversion against our children, end quote. And last week, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis said he would consider sending Child Protective Services to investigate parents who take their kids to drag shows. Jonathan Capehart, this isn't just um, one-off. This is an alternative reality. What was Kelly Kellyanne Conway's thing? Alternate, alternate facts. Alternative this facts. is an alternate universe of hate 
of um, intolerance, of violence, um, asking the government to execute them. I mean, this is um, beyond flashing red. What do we do? Um, well, one, we have to keep talking about this. We have to um, do what Frank did and call out those elected officials, those public officials who are engaging in the rhetoric, engaging in pushing and signing the legislation that targets the LGBTQ community. And on top of the AP report, you know, I want to go back to the Southern Property Law Center poll that was released last week or two weeks ago that I wrote about. And part of that report, which was focused on the, quote, great replacement conspiracy uh, in the wake of blacks being targeted um, by, a white, by a white nationalist in Buffalo, it also makes the point that the attacks on gender identity and the LGBTQ community are also having an impact. And let me read you this, because they polled people. It says, when asked respondents if they believe transgender people are a threat to children, 30% overall agreed, including 23% of Democrats, 39% of Republicans, and 27% of independents. The number of people who, who agreed that transgender people, quote, are trying to indoctrinate children into their lifestyle, end quote, was far higher but only among Republicans and independents, 63% and 39% respectively, who agreed. That's what we're dealing with here, that it's, it, it is the way that the community is being talked about, the way that it is being targeted, the way that it's being, it, its own existence is being legislated, is not just having an impact on the Republican Party base, it is having an impact on, um, on the country and on the way not only that we talk about these issues, but the way we look at our fellow Americans who happen to be lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, or queer. How do we decide this is the bottom, this is as bad as it gets, and go another direction, Jonathan? I, I don't know. Um, usually when we decide as a nation that we have to go in, in another direction, it's unfortunately, usually, after a traumatic event. Uh, Pulse nightclub, six years ago yesterday, six years ago yesterday, at the time, the largest mass shooting in the country, but it, it remains the largest murder um, of, of LGBTQ Americans in our history. I pray that we don't get to a situation where Kerr Elaine isn't thwarted, but actually happens, actually take, takes place. It's a, it's a shame that it takes um, tragedy to get this country to, to zero in and focus in on the hate um, either actions or rhetoric that's being waged. But sometimes that's... That's what's needed in order to make the country wake up. My God, I hope we don't have to go that far.